Now, you touched on briefly, you mentioned earlier things like Angry Birds and um, people online. Going back to Elite, were you ever tempted to, to go down this sort of uh, creating a Facebook game type approach, a, a mobile game for the, for the mobile platforms? Why, why did you choose the, the, the PC platform? I think that the Elite game is the sort of game that I want to play. And it's going back to the, the philosophy we had when we made the original Elite. Let's make a game that we want to play. And that's why we wanted to embrace the people on Kickstarter. Because they all seem to be, you know, they wanted something that would actually be fun that they would like to play. You know, I want to play a particular type of game. I don't want to be griefed, dare I say it, by American teenagers killing me. You know, I, I want yeah. something where, where people... And I thought, for example, the, the Kickstarter sort of forums and comments were actually very, very um, friendly. Mm. You know, the, and I would hope the game would feel like that. You know, I want a game where player versus player kills are, are enabled and possible, but people actually behave in a fairly chivalrous way. You know, okay. the, there are a lot of ways forward, and, and I think that can be possible. We might have to create groups that say, okay, these are, um, you know, and make it semi sort of self-policing, but where older people you know, take, are much more sort of civil and that people who are unreasonable aren't mm. part of that group. You know, okay, so, so we, it's like almost have different servers for different... That's right. For yeah, di the way that different way people want to play the games. Yes, mm. where you can have... Um, you, you can play with everyone or that you just get... You see this in games like Warcraft as well where it, it, get, it has a, a sort of culture of its own um, and people behave in a certain way mm. and people who don't tend to get... Um, you know, piled on by the people in the game too. Yeah, sure. So now that the game is going to happen, yeah, uh, and obviously people had an influence, like myself, had an influence by you know paying the money to the Kickstarter project. What can the likes of myself, as a as a contributor, and probably other people, how can, how can we influence the direction of the game? Will there be an influence, or is it just going to be you guys and your team are going to sit down and right? Head so, together? so there is there is a lot of influence. We're going live with uh, forums in I think it's next week as we're recording this, and uh, what happens there is you have different tiers. So we have discussion forums for the Kickstarter backers. There's also a design discussion forum where people who've gone to a higher tier can actually participate in the design process. Mm -hmm. And, and a, a, all of that, a lot of that material is still going to be available, so we're going to be doing polls and discussions for... Because there are a lot of different ways we can handle things, you know, j just um, examples, you know, what happens when you die, you know, mm. all of that, you know. So, so trying to make it so that it's fair for people, because people will raise points going, oh, I don't really want it to be like that, this because of this reason. You go, actually, that's a good point. How do we cope with that? Mm. You know, and, and all of those things are we'll come up with something that's a lot better. And so, yes, we will involve the people. It's going to be, in, in practice, it's actually harder to be heard when you think of the number of people who've backed the Kickstarter as sort of a football stadium's full. Sure. You know, so yeah. we've just got to be sort of realistic about, about that. But particularly on the de design discussion forum, where it's a lot fewer people, mm. you know, the, the voices can be heard. And I think there's, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a positive mix, and I think that should work well. Okay. Can I put in a, re in a request mm -hmm. for, can there always be a docking computer? <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I just remember that as from the original game, you'd have a cargo hold full of something really valuable. You were going to a space station that was selling for an extortionate cool. amount of money, and you'd ever so slightly mistimed the, the the entry to the space station, and it would all be gone. Wasn't that great? It was yes. <laughs> um, I suppose it was great in a way in a in the challenge. I certainly improved your aim, and you had to completely line up the spaceship. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, things like that, obviously I'm not expecting you to say, yes, it's got every ship's going to have a docking computer. But things like that, things, suggestions. Um, Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, the, the docking can be made easier anyway, mm. or, or made so that it's less problematic. Yeah, I think but the controls I, I do understand be fine, the, Yeah, they? I do understand the sentiment. And it's, it's, the, the problem with it actually wasn't the fact of the docking, it's the fact that it was frustrating. Mm. That was the problem. Yeah, you and thought you, had you got so it right much and, riding on it, mm. and you had no real, you had very little way to gauge whether you were right or wrong. It was, and it was also final because mm. you obviously didn't have save points then or checkpoints. Or did you ever, with the docking computer, see the word "sorry"? I can't remember. I may well because have we put that in the game because it wasn't. Sometimes the docking computer would mess up. Right, <laughs> it would say sorry. <laughs> top of game over. 
Well, that, I do, I, one thing that came floating back to me just then was um, when the, when the the H would appear. No, no. What was it? The, what was the the symbol that was it? The S for space station would appear. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's right. Yeah. So it means that you were in range. That's right. Yeah. And so you're being sh- uh, being shot at by somebody, probably a viper, probably a police, mm-hmm. and that you were you know done something wrong, and you'd hit the docking thing, and the, and the S would go away, and you think, damn it, damn it, damn it. Because you weren't, you were basically oh, on the cusp. Right on the edge. You're on the yeah, cusp, yeah, and you're yeah. trying to get there, hoping, and then then you'd miss it, and mm. then you'd have to be searching around. All that fun. Yeah. So, um, so wh- how how's it going to go? What's going to happen next? Well, we're we're working, we're planning everything out at the moment, um, and we're we're ramping up. You know, we're actually working hard now. We're you know, getting sort of get it geared up to make the game and making the elements of it already so yeah. it's a very very exciting time so um, obviously what sort of time scale are you, are you looking at is it going to be ready when it's ready or are you, you sort of aiming well to, for to a, an extent it has to be ready when it's ready we still um, expect to ship in March which is when we said we would March 2014 mm-hmm. um, and with the beta sooner and the alpha so um, but once we've got up to speed, we will reassess that in, you know, in detail and we'll communicate to people and okay. we'll say what, what things will be coming online when and keeping people abreast. <clears throat> and I read in one of your updates, or maybe in one of your one of the clips you put on YouTube, that um, obviously to, when, when it's launched, the game will work in a certain level, and, but then you're, you're going to add other features as you go, That's such right. as like planets and, and what have you. We don't think it will, it will stop, we know we will keep updating it. So it won't just be a matter of, um, say, like taking the Warcraft example. They open up a, a different part of the of the planet or whatever. You, you, you're not going to be opening up another sort of star system. You, do you think you will be adding new will features we, or be doing that as right. well? The, the plan is to do each of those things. Mm-hmm. So um, that there are new features that we would add, and actually some of those new features allow a lot more new gameplay. Right. You know. So you know the ultimately the ability to get out of your spaceship and that means a whole raft of things yeah um, and the other thing is we plan to reserve star systems that we will gradually open up over time as well so okay. we can add to the story and right. add richness to it so, so a combination of the, of the so do you, do you envisage there being a, sort of an overall sort of story arc as well as the sort of the open world um, sort of um, aspect because obviously with Elite, you'd go from Love or however you... Mm. How do you... Lave. Lave. I always said it Lave, yeah. Um, to, to Leasty and all yeah, the other that, places. Yeah. But there wasn't... As I recall, there weren't necessarily missions to do. you just sort of go buy and sell and you'd occasionally, unfortunately, stumble across some Thargoids or you'd um, shoot down some very slow-moving pythons. There were, and there were the odd mission, um, which you could be asked to do, <clears> but they were, they were later in the game. Mm. Um, but I think the point really is the story arc was your own progression. Yeah, of you know, and so um, and I think when you have a game with a lot of players, uh, story makes less sense to the individuals. Of you know, so the the idea is yes, there'll be a lot of story mm. in terms of how you progress, but not a an overarching story in the traditional sense. I mean, one of the things that I said right at the start of the Kickstarter campaign: this will not be the sort of game that has loads of cutscenes. Right. Okay. No, you know, that'd be good. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And it, it, it will be much more, you know, it's the immediacy of the game. It's the, um, I think also an awful lot will come emergently from interplayer interactions. Mm. You know, a, a lot of things where, um, I think I mentioned in one of the videos, you know, that we imagine, we see the galaxy changing over time, but all the players can be part of that. Mm. So if you've got a, a, a civil war or a war where two, two factions are trying to take over a system, depending on where the balance of players side, you can end up that side winning. Right, or, or more, losing. More, more dramatically losing. Because there was a, wasn't there a Warcraft update where they basically almost trashed the whole one part of the of the world and so basically a lot of people had to build things up from <laughs> right. scratch again. Which of course, you know, in these turbulent times where these games are taking place, it could be plausible in, it within, you know, within reason. Obviously. Well, natural disasters as well are very interesting. But I think, you know, it's it's... What is the story? I mean, I, I think it's like comparing, saying, is there any story in, um, in a soap opera mm. versus is there any story in a, a film? 
I think for me, a game of this kind is much more, and I, I, I so probably belittles it, but it's an ongoing world, an ongoing story you're participating mm. in. Mm. And you're seeing the world change and you're reacting to those changes. That's much more like a sort of real life soap opera type ongoing drama mm. than it is one with a rigid story arc that has a finite end. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, would you say you're actually you're, you're making the game? That you want to play is that where you get your real drive for it? These, yeah. you know, these are games that you want to play yourself. I think particularly um, this game. Yes, I think all of the games, for, for whatever reason, I want to make. You know, the, making a game is fantastic fun. I mean, making I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy playing them a lot, and I, I, I do play the games a lot. Um, but I think for for me, the love is making them. But with Elite, yes, it's a game that I do really care about and want mm. to make right because it's been so long now <clears throat> and obviously from a heritage point of view it's what got me where I am so I know mm. a lot to it yeah okay, touching back on the um, the education sort of side as somebody who's running their own their own studio how would you so how would you suggest somebody if who's interested in getting into the games industry what would you say to suggest from your experience is the best way for them to to, to go into it, so from like from GCSEs upwards, how would you suggest? Okay, well, I think they should, firstly to think what part of the process excites them or fascinates them, and also just to to do a sort of a thought experiment: as do you want to spend a lot of your life doing this? Um, and you know, is it the creating the story for games? Is it creating the art? Is it the intricate models that you like making? Is it the way they animate? Is it the music? Is it the sound effects? You know, all of these different disciplines. It's good to think early on well, what interests you. So that's one yeah. side of it. If it's the programming and the design of how, how that's put together, you know, the, there are a lot of different roles sort of within that. Um, if it's programming, I would say go to a good computer science course um, and get a good computer science degree, um, you know, especially from Imperial College, from Cambridge, uh, from Oxford. You know, there, there, there are good places around. Um, that's if you're in the UK, obviously. And go from there with art, there's a lot of art around. Um, but the, the simplest way to get into a games company is through something called QA, quality assurance testing. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't really need qualifications, it's much more a case of um, having a sort of systematic way of going about things, being responsible, um, and having a love for games, having a real enthusiasm. Um, but that doesn't necessarily equip you for sort of the, pro the programming roles unless you've separately managed to learn that yeah. yourself. So I think it depends on the sort of role that you see yourself in and that you would want to do, you know, and look at if there are appropriate courses. Quite a lot of the courses, the game-based courses, are, um, are they're variable in quality. Okay. I'd look at the ones that are approved by a, a, um, a group called Skillset, which mm -hmm. I'm a part of, so I should declare an interest. Yeah. But that's partly because one of the things I've criticised game courses in the past, and so um, government work. This is a government-backed sort of sure. quango, if you want to yeah. better word, that approves these courses. But at least there's a huge positivity there because what it's doing is it's trying to differentiate between courses which are just trying to get sort of bums on seats but actually don't teach things that are very relevant to things that are actually teaching things that are useful for the industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's brilliant. And one final question, could you set an argument? Cobra, the original Cobra was Mark... Three. I thought it was. <laughs> David, thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to meet you and a pleasure to talk about one of the games of my childhood and one of the games of the future. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. <laughs>